All right, welcome to today's lesson on Swing. We're going to be looking specifically at layout managers and how to arrange our components onto a panel in a little bit more of an appealing manner. So in order to make your GUI a little bit more visually appealing than the ones we've made so far, we need to make sure we're arranging our components in a logical order. This is done using layout manager classes that are provided to us in the Swing and AWT packages. Now there's a variety of different layout managers we can use and these are some of the more common ones that we'll take a look at today. We've got Flow Layout which is in fact the default layout of manager that we've already been using in this course. Grid Layout, Border Layout, Box Layout and the Grid Bag Layout. Now when you want to use a layout manager you have to do two things. First you have to instantiate or create a layout manager object. Now most of the layout manager um, classes use a similar type of constructor to the one we say here. So we state the type of layout manager we want to use, give it a name, and then construct it with no parameters or arguments given. Then what we have to do is we have to set that layout to our content pane. So whatever panel I'm using as my content pane, I set the layout to the layout manager I just previously created. After doing this, I can then start to add all my components into that panel, which would then be added as uh, they're supposed to be based on whatever layout manager you've been using. So let's take a look at how some of these layout managers work and how they add their components and help us organize them. So the first one is the flow layout. And as I said earlier, this is the default layout strategy that we've already been using when we've been adding our components to our uh, panels. This will add components in line from left to right in a whole row until it gets to the end of the row and then starts to the next line. So it's kind of like reading a book from left to right, top to bottom. We add our components using the this.add, so this being the panel that I'm adding to, and then the component that I'm adding to that panel. The length of a row, or in other words, the number of components I can fit in a particular row, is dependent on the size of each component I put in it. So the wider the component I have, the fewer components I'll be able to fit on a row before I go to the next one. Each individual row is centered in a panel. However, you can change this to be either left aligned or right aligned by using either the set alignment method or by using a different constructor for flow, flow layout that actually asks you to provide uh, an alignment argument. Okay, and you can look at how to do that in the Javadocs of a flow layout class. The second type of layout manager we're going to look at is the grid layout. So what this does is it divides your panel up into a grid of X rows and Y columns. And the number of rows and columns you have are determined when you create that object. So now the constructor is modified a little bit by having two extra parameters in there. So I have to give an argument for x, or the number of rows, and y, or the number of columns when I create it. Then when I add my components in, I'm going to be doing so from left to right, top to bottom, just like I was in the flow layout. The difference between this and the flow layout is that in the flow layout, we're stretching the size of our rows um, and columns based on the actual preferred size of my components. In this case, all the components are going to be the same size. So we actually are going to ignore the preferred size I've made of the components I'm putting in. So everything is going to take up the same amount of space, expanding or contracting those components so that they all fit properly. Now the other thing with a grid layout is that it's going to order them or put them in from left to right, top to bottom. So I can't put a component in this corner first, then go back and put something up here, and then go over and put something over here. I can't do that. I have to put them in in the order that I want them to appear in my grid. So keep that in mind when you're adding your components. The next type of layout manager we have is called a border layout. And this one divides my panel up into five separate areas. So in each one of these areas, I can add one individual component, allowing me to add a total of five different components here. The way this works is that the north and south ends are going to cover the entire width of my component. And the height of this particular area is going to be dependent on the preferred height of the component I'm putting in. So obviously if I have a very tall component, this north is going to stretch downwards and fill up more of my panel. Similarly, the south will stretch upwards. The west and east areas are going to cover the remaining height that's not taken up by things that are in the north and south area. And then these will expand in towards the center based on the width or the preferred width of that particular component that is put in each one of those areas. The center area is going to expand to cover in any remaining space not taken up by the other four areas. The other thing we want to know with these is that any position that doesn't have a component in it 
doesn't take up any space. So if I decide that I don't want to put anything in the east area of my border layout, then what happens is the center area will expand over towards the right hand side, filling up both of these sections of my border layout. And now when you want to add a component, instead of just using the add and give it the component, you have to add a second argument, which is going to provide the location of where you want this particular component to go. So border layout dot, and in whatever area, north, east, south, west, or center. So again, this means that you can only put one component in each of the actual areas of your border layout. The next layout manager we've got is the box layout. This is going to allow us to arrange components either in a horizontal row, or a vertical column. So it's kind of again like the grid layout we saw before, except instead of having, instead of having a two-dimensional grid, we just have one row or one column. When you use the constructor, you're going to determine whether you want that to be a horizontal x-axis or a vertical y-axis. The other thing you have to do with this particular constructor is you have to provide the container as an argument. So whichever panel you're going to apply your box layout to, you have to provide it as an argument and then give either the x-axis or y-axis direction. That means also that you don't have to use a um, this panel dot set layout for this particular type of layout because you've already set the layout when you've done it here. Okay. Now when you're doing this, if you, let's say I'm going to do something that is a horizontal or x-axis box layout. The width of each particular component in that layout is going to be based upon the um, preferred size of the individual components that are there. So things can stretch or, or shrink based on the size of the widths. The height of this particular component is going to be based on the highest height of the biggest or tallest component that's placed in its entire row. Okay? So and then all the other ones will stretch out to make in and fill in that specific same height. Similarly, the opposite is true if I want to do one uh, a box layout that goes vertically. So the heights of each will be based on the preferred height of each particular component, and then the overall width will be based on the widest of all the components that I'm putting in there. And again, when I put my components into this particular layout, they go in order that I place them in, so from left to right or from top to bottom. I can't put something in a different location based on the order that you put them in. The final one that we're going to look at we're not really going to look at. I'm just more going to tell you that it exists because this is uh, by far the most complex layout manager that we have available to us. But because it's so complex, it also increases the amount of flexibility that we have. It allows us to make much more detailed and specific arrangements of our particular components. Okay? What this does is, much like the grid layout, it's going to divide our panel up into a grid of horizontal rows and vertical columns. The difference is that each particular cell in our grid can vary in size, so it's not static as to the size, it's dynamic. We can change, we can have one cell that's very small, the next cell could be much bigger, and so on. And then when I put components into those cells, a particular component can take up more than one cell if we want as well, so one or more cell. Um, to do this, you also have to use grid bag constraints objects, uh, which again makes this added level of, of complexity. So this goes beyond the scope of what we're actually going to show you of how to do in this course, but it does exist and there are Javadocs for it if you want to go um, and learn some of this stuff on your own. You are welcome to do that. Another option of making your layouts a little bit more complex and therefore a little bit easier to design exactly what you want is by adding panels into panels. So if you remember when we had the border layout, I was limited to only having five components in them. However, what you could do is the component you place in one particular one of these areas could itself be a panel that has its own uh, layout manager in it. So in this case, I have a grid layout that has a bunch of boxes. I take that, put it here, so this particular side would have a bunch of boxes in it, and then a big one here and here and so on. So as you start adding panels into panels into panels, you can start increasing the complexity of what your overall layout is going to look like. That's it. That's all we have for today. We'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.